Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. My name is Richard, and um, we're going to be looking at Oliver Anthony reading the Bible and what that looks like, what that was, who he is, all this other stuff. If you don't know who he is, uh, go ahead and click here, and uh, you can find out. But this is world-famous viral video, country music slash bluegrass. I'm not really sure which. Please tell me in the comments uh, what it is, or maybe it's both. I'm not an expert, uh, but I do like the song. Uh, it's real, it's raw, uh, and it's just good. It's just good. Yeah, there's some curse words. Okay. But we're going to be talking about that, uh, in fact. And we're going to be talking about the scripture and some reactions that people had on both sides. Coming up next. All right. So, welcome to the show, everybody. If you are a new subscriber, uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, I haven't, like I said in the last video, uh, doesn't haven't done a lot of videos or stuff on this channel much in the last few months. I got demonetized by YouTube and uh, just a long story. Nothing, nothing like heinous and weird. I mean, I'm spicier than some, uh, but certainly not crazy. I don't think. I mean, I'm crazy for you know the standard leftist and uh, many other people. So maybe I'm. But that being said, welcome aboard, and I'm just going to be producing content whenever. I can. I do have another channel where I do interviews. I am a Christian, a uh, husband and a father, a pastor of church here in Kentucky. I'm originally from California, though. And yeah, so that's a bit about me. If you wouldn't mind telling me where you're from, drop a little comment, maybe just the state or the city where you're from. You don't have to give me your address or anything. I might be weird. But uh, just say hello if you're new. That'd be great. Uh, and subscribe and hit that little notification bell too. Cause again, YouTube is weird. So if you're going to, if you're going to do that, hit the notification also, cause that way you'll miss no content. So what Oliver Anthony, who's this guy? Let's look at this real quick. All right. What is he doing? So he goes to the, the concert, uh, and I followed him on YouTube again. I don't know a lot about him. I don't, I don't have a ton of time. Uh, and I, you know, I don't have a researcher or anything like that, but from what I've heard, he's a uh, few different people said he's gotten kind of had an experience with God or, or he was, he's had some substance abuse issues, things like that. And he called out to God recently and, you know, maybe the Lord's blessing him. I don't know. I mean, let's listen to this and see, and uh, we'll see a few reactions of it. Okay. <laughs> It's crazy to me because uh, I remember back in June, I played here for about 20 people. And, uh, <laughs> but that's, that's the beautiful part of this country, though, is even an idiot like me can make something happen. So if I can do it, you can do it. Before we start. So right there, I don't know if you heard that, uh, and that, you know, he's talking, give God the glory. Right. And. So right there, and that's going to put that in your back pocket for somebody else, another reaction here. Singing, and I mean we, because I hope y'all are going to be singing too. I just had something I, I felt compelled to share with you. This is in uh, Psalm, Psalm 37, 12 through 20. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts, and their bows will be broken. All right, so right there, about halfway through. He's reading the Bible, okay? He's reading the Bible, and... He's reading the Bible <laughs> and he's not reading it to mock it. He's not reading it like, and yet some people are like, ah, oh, there you go. Like, we have the 10 commandments. We still do in many areas. That's in the Bible. It's 10 words really is what it should be called not in the commandments, but whatever. That's in Exodus chapter 20. It's thou shalt not. Right. And those are the 10 things. And keep in mind, most of the Bible is actually a story and, and, uh, parable and history and not just do this and don't do this. I mean, the Bible's 66 books. Uh, what is it? 20, I forget, remember all, how many authors? 30 authors, right? Something like that. Totally blanking on that. Uh, 
written over like 1,500, 1,600 years from Genesis to Revelation. Somebody reads the Bible, everyone, every Christian should rejoice. And I think people just in general, because the Bible is an amazing book. You can turn to Christ today. You can you can confess your sin and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that Jesus died for sinners. That's why he came into the world. God made flesh, came into the world and lived among us, lived showing us how we should live. But more than that, he sacrificed himself for us because we deserve death. You deserve death. And so do I because of our rebellion and our sin, our disobedience. And yet Jesus died for sinners and then resurrected, defeating both sin and death. That's the gospel. That's the glorious good news. So anybody reading a Bible, that's that's massive. That's huge. So better the little that have righteousness than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will have plenty. But the wicked will perish. Though the Lord's enemies are like the flowers of the field. Okay, right there. Do you get that? He's reading God's word. Remember, God's word is alive and active. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And the Holy Spirit comes along. It's not like another dead document or a religious text. It's alive because it's from God. Men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. That's what the Bible is. It's not just a religious text. He's starting to tear up there. You could hear it, the quiver in his voice, the brokenness in his voice. This man's a real man. And he's understanding that life isn't quite what he thought. Maybe he grew up church, maybe he didn't. Maybe his grandma took him. Maybe he went to VBS, maybe Sunday school, whatever. Maybe he didn't. Is he the perfect Christian? No. Am I? No. If you're a follower of Christ, are you the perfect Christian? Do you sin? Do you still use curse words? Do you still slander? Do you still uh, use porn or gossip? Yeah. And now keep in mind, this is not at all a, a, a recommendation or a commendation to keep doing it. Right. And so some people are having that, well, he uses BS and it says, it says, damn. And, okay. Again, we'll get there. But, I don't know. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's finish this. They will be consumed, and they will go up in smoke. <laughs> okay, so, the unbeliever doesn't read the text of God's word. And have a quiver in his voice. Now, I don't know his heart. I have no idea. Uh, you know, I'd love to interview him. I'd love to talk to him. You know, so would everybody else, I'm sure, right? Seems like a nice guy from the few videos I've watched and, and just the genuineness. I don't know if he's married or if he has kids. Uh, but either way, he's reading the Bible. And, and it's just yet people are like, oh, what? And other people are like, my friend Jeff here. Uh, he's a pastor down in Tennessee. Great guy. Um, um, failing that, they will try and destroy him with all they have. He represents an enduring independent humanity, and they cannot allow him to encourage, encourage, encourage the same in others. Pray for him seriously. So they already said he used bad words, right? So there's one. Yeah, he used bad words. You can't do that. His song is fine, Teresa says. Imprecatory prayer to an audience of unsaved sinners is not. He is not equipped to teach, to encourage him to humble himself and stick to his music because emboldening mad, mad lost sinners to curse our government is exactly what Satan would want. They're all just as lost. Okay, well, first of all, I assume Teresa's a believer in Jesus. Let's see what it says. Slave of Christ. All right, praise God. But what she's saying, the song is good. And then she's also just casting everyone in to the outer darkness. Thanks for the input, Karen. Yeah, that's not helpful. But what's she doing? She's saying, oh, yeah, the song's fine. Great. Okay, good. And you might not like the song. That's okay. I like the song. A lot of people like the song. Because it's real. It's raw. It's not manufactured artificial crap. Right? But that's... 
Why is crap okay, by the way, and not something else? Neat. Shite. Shite. Right? Why is that not fine? Again, that's the the ultimate point is God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance, First Samuel says. God looks at the heart. This is the text throughout all of Scripture, this whole idea. God is after your heart in the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's not like being a good person in the Old Testament gets you saved, and in the New Testament, it's grace. Just do whatever you want. No, you're always saved by grace through faith. We look at Father Abraham, who was the father of the Hebrew people. He believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and that's confirmed in the New Testament multiple places as well. You believe God. That's it. And so when you come to Christ, you believe that he is the sacrificial lamb. He is the one who takes away sin. Now, if Oliver Anthony's done that recently, you think he's just going to clean up his life automatically? You think all of a sudden he's going to be like, oh, shoot, shoot, there's another one. Why is shoot okay and not shit, right? With an I. <laughs> Why? These are just English words. It's the heart. God's after the heart. If you're like, dang it, and you're angry, dang it and damn it, are those different? Other than a vowel or two, a consonant or two? No, they're not. Because God is after your heart. If you're angry with your brother, Jesus says, it's like you've murdered him in your heart. Now, if you're if you're just walking around like a sailor, cursing up a storm, blah, blah, blah. Yes, we should not have crass words when we're servants of Christ. Absolutely. But at the same time, this process of what's called sanctification. It's like when you're sanding off something, right? A rough board or you're polishing out and getting the the rust out of something or you're peeling carrots right it's all you know and you're peeling the carrot to make it nice and smooth whatever right you god sanctifies you and i've been walking with christ for what 12 years now something like that 13 years it's been a road it's been a journey and i'm way different of a man than i was 13 years ago and yet 14 i don't know what it is something like that that matters. And so to be like, well, he uses bad words. Well, he shouldn't be preaching. He's not preaching. He just read the Bible, right? He's just here. He just read the Bible. No big deal, Teresa. Somebody else said, let's look at this one here. Um, let's remove that. Somebody else uh, said there was a different, let me show you here. see that all right mostly pe peaceful jawbone enthusiast that's that's red i know that guy uh i'm probably gonna be roasted for this i don't appreciate a guy famous for a song that says Shh, bullshit damn yeah right and takes the lord's name in vain using god's word of this concert you know again i i get that sure i get it but at the same time, like we're not everybody's arrived at their refined Christian perspective. And this is where a lot of people, and again, going back to Teresa for a moment, how does she know that all these people are, uh, are unrepentant sinners? Several people are saying, amen. Another guy before that said what? Give God the glory. Unbelievers don't say, give God the glory. That's what Christians say. That's what followers of Jesus say. Like, this is stupid, people. So anyway, I just thought this was helpful. That's my reaction to it. I think it's great. Uh, I'd love to interview um, Oliver Anthony. I'm going to try and reach out to him. I don't know. You know, I'm a nobody. But at the same time, you know, two weeks ago, he was a nobody, right? So maybe. But anyway, it's a good song. If you haven't listened to it, go ahead and listen to it. And, um, you know, yeah, there's a couple curse words that are currently curse words. But, you know, we say God. I say God all the time when I'm preaching or when I say when I'm praying. But you use God's name in vain. Using God's name as a curse word isn't isn't what that's talked about. Yes, we shouldn't use it as a curse word, but that's not the only thing there it says to do or not do. It's, in fact, actually promising in the name of God, I will do this. And when you don't do it, that's in vain. That's empty. It's worthless. So, I don't know. It's too it's too much. I mean, 500 years from now, all the words that he just said in, his, in this song are not going to be cuss words, curse words. And a few hundred years ago, there were different curse words that aren't curse words today, right? And there's even generational or not generational, well, generational, but also a uh, cultural, right? You go to England, you go to Australia and here or South Africa, whatever, Hong Kong. 
anywhere. And there's different English words or different other translations from other languages that might be a bad word and it might not be. It's like God looks at the heart. What's Oliver's heart? He's reading the scripture and he's tearing up, right? I mean, that's my big takeaway. So anyway, hope you find this helpful. <clears throat> Go ahead and like and subscribe if you have not already. Uh, and hit that notification bell, like I said, that does alert you because I don't know what YouTube's doing. I, like I said, I've, um, wasn't monetized or I got monetized and I wasn't, and then it just removed and who knows? I don't really care. Uh, if you do want to support me, uh, you can buy me a bag of groceries or something like that. Uh, it's what's called buy me a coffee. So you can buy me coffee. I, I like coffee. Um, buy me a coffee.com slash Richard T Henry, buy me coffee.com slash Richard T Henry. Here's a little thing right here. Kind of like Patreon. Uh, if I do more stuff and when I do more stuff, there's other apps like locals and things like that there. You can do specific content just for that. So if you subscribe there again, I pastor, I got young kids. Uh, I'm looking at a few other industry type things, uh, to make money and, uh, produce, produce stuff. I'm in a small town here in Kentucky. And so, you know, I want to serve my community as well. And of course my church. So anyway, hopefully you found this helpful. This was good. Again, tell me where you're from. Drop it in the comments. And I don't know. Am I missing the boat here? What do you think about curse words? I mean, there's so much other stuff. I was going to look at Proverbs 15, but go read Proverbs 15. Just dig into the scripture. Um, go read that today. Uh, today's the 15th, so it's the proverb of the day. But go do that. I was listening to that before I got on here. And it's just, it's just good. It's just good. So hope you found this helpful, y'all. And my slogan, be against the world for the world, contra mundum pro mundo. It's, it's against the world, but for the world's sake. So the world is broken. It's screwed up. It's cursed. But Jesus came into the world. Jesus came into this dirty, broken, nasty, cursed cosmos. This creation lived on the earth and died for sinners. So y'all take care.